Good morning. It gives us great joy and honor and delight to welcome into our midst Father Joseph Abouid, who served at St. George in El Paso, Texas, and is currently now the Dean um, at St. George in Coral Gables or Miami, Florida, where our own beloved Kuri Mireille is from. Um, so it's a great joy. He is our father, but he is also the son of Asa and Lydia, two of our very faithful parishioners. So Abuna, this is your home. Um, he's left his wife and his two children to come to a wedding in the area. So we are blessed and honored to have you in our midst. Welcome Thank home, you. Father. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for your kind welcome. And Father George as well. I love you both, my brothers. Beloved brothers and, Christ, and sisters in Christ, Christ is in our midst. Now, I promised my mom that I was going to make it short, so I'll try. Please don't hold it against me. But today I would like to talk about this beautiful, beautiful parable and how it really takes a very important role in our lives, especially nowadays. The parable of the Good Samaritan is well known to many of us from childhood. It is customary to think that we know it well. But do we really know it? On the face of it, we sort of know it. But really, it is only possible to spiritually know some parable, some teaching of Christ, when his words become a rule of life for us. Christ uttered the parable of the Good Samaritan as an answer to a lawyer's question about what he should do in order to receive eternal life. All Jews knew the answer to this question, which was already given by God in the Old Testament. In the books of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 5, you shall love your God, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And in the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 18, you shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The answer, my brethren, lies in love toward God and love towards the neighbor. The lawyer is not satisfied with this answer. He asks, who is my neighbor? At that time, the question arose as to whom one should be considered a neighbor. The lawyers considered only Jews to be their neighbors because they fell under the law of Moses. The Pharisees considered as their neighbors only such men who were as righteous as they considered themselves to be. So they become the point of reference. And all others they considered to be sinners, as we saw in the parable of the publican and the Pharisee. And that is why they did not acknowledge them as neighbors. The Lord Jesus Christ introduced an essential complement to this moral law of the Old Testament. Jesus Christ explains to the scribe just whom one should consider to be one's neighbor by the parable of the Good Samaritan. The Samaritans and Jews were at enmity with one another on the basis of religion. A Samaritan was for a Jew and a man unclean and despicable. But the Samaritan knows better that in the performance of works of mercy, there is no distinction between men. When there is mercy, there's no distinction between humans. The interpretation of the fathers of the church of the parable is highly instructive. According to the thought of the fathers, the man going down from Jerusalem to Jericho is Adam, who in this case represents all mankind. Our prim primogenitors, who did not stand firm in good and fell into sin, were banished from paradise from the heavenly Jerusalem 
That's why he was going from Jerusalem to Jericho and had to live in the world where they were forced to contend with various difficulties. The thieves are a symbol of demonic powers who envied the purity of the first people and pushed them onto the path of sin, depriving them from faithfulness to God's will and of life in paradise. Now the wounds are the consequences of sin, which make us spiritually weak. The priest and the Levite represent the law of the Old Testament given by Moses and the priesthood of Aaron, which by themselves could not save man. The law and the priesthood by itself could not save man. The Good Samaritan is Jesus Christ, according to the fathers, who gave us the New Testament and the grace of God, oil and wine in the parable, for the healing of our infirmities. The inn is the church of God, where we find everything necessary for our recovery. The innkeeper is an image of the church's pastors and teachers, whom God charged to care for the flock. The departure of the Samaritan in the morning symbolizes the appearance of Christ after his resurrection and also his glorious ascension. The two denarii given to the innkeeper are divine revelation which can be given through sacred scripture and tradition. Finally, the Samaritan's promise to return to the inn for a final reckoning is a prophecy of the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, when to each man will be given according to his works. But nowadays, how do we as Orthodox Christians recognize who our neighbor is and how we must treat him or her? We can find the answer to these questions in the life of St. Dimitri Klepnin. Father Dimitri Klepnin was born in 1904 in Russia to an educated, cultivated, devout Orthodox family. His mother Sophia helped establish Orthodox schools in Odessa and Ukraine, where they lived and became active in providing help and support to the city's poor. The Klepnin family fled Russia after the Communist Revolution, first living in Constantinople, then Yugoslavia, and finally in Paris, France. A turning point in the young Dimitri's life occurred in 1923 when his beloved mother died, which led him to seek the priesthood. After years of seminary education, where he enrolled himself at St. Sergius Theological School in Paris, and then he came here to the States. Dimitri married Tamara Baimakova in 1937 and was ordained that same year by Metropolitan Evlogi. Now, Father Dimitri's life was forever changed in 1939. He was assigned that year as the priest of the parish at the shelter for the poor operated by an Orthodox nun, Mother Maria Skopstova. Significantly for his life and that of Mother Maria, that same year, France was invaded and conquered by the German Nazis. Mother Maria, now known as Saint Maria of Paris, had opened a home and shelter to minister to the poor of Paris. As the Nazis began the mass arrests of French Jews in 1942, many of them sought help and refuge at Mother Maria's shelter. As a shield against deportation to a concentration camp, many Jews sought to obtain baptismal certificates from Father Dimitri. While initially troubled by engaging in such deception, you know, he's a priest, he can't be lying. He realized his Christian faith and priesthood demanded that he act. He placed a mark 
on the false certificates in order to remember which ones were authentic and which ones were not. I think, said Father Dimitri, the good Christ would have given me the, that paper if I were in their place. So I must do it. If a man surprised by a storm takes shelter in a church, do I have the right to close the door? In February of 1943, the Gestapo arrived at Mother Maria's shelter and arrested Mother Maria, her son Yuri, and several others. In Yuri's pocket, they discovered a letter from a Jewish family to Father Dimitri requesting a baptismal certificate. Father Dimitri was absent during the raid, but the next morning, he calmly celebrated a final divine liturgy in the church and went to face the Gestapo. A portion of this interrogation with a German officer named Hoffman has been kept to this day. And if we release you, will you promise never again to help the Jews? Said the German officer. Father Dimitri replied, I can say no such thing. I am a Christian and must act as I must. The officer, striking the priest across the face, screamed, Jew lover, how dare you talk of those pigs as being a Christian duty? Raising the cross from around his neck, Father Dimitri replied, do you know this Jew? For this response, Father Dimitri was struck again and knocked to the floor. Two months later, Father Dimitri was sent to a prison camp along with Mother Maria's son, Yuri. His cassock, torn and dirty, was, he was abused and ridiculed by the guards and shoved, that shoved them, shouting, Jew, Jew. When Yuri began to cry, seeing this abuse that was taking place with Father Dimitri, Father Dimitri calmly called him and said, don't cry. Remember that Jesus Christ had to bear much greater humiliations. In, in the camp, Father Dimitri continued to function as a priest. The Orthodox prisoners who were also there were permitted to set up a chapel in which the Divine Liturgy was served daily. And finally, before he died, Father Dimitri wrote of his own life, I am fully aware that the will of God is being carried out and that a new obedience in the church is beginning for me. After a year, Father Dimitri was sent to Buchenwald concentration camp in Germany and then suffering from a broken health with pneumonia, he died in February 9th of 1944 and his body was burned in the Buchenwald crematorium. In 2004, Father Dimitri, Mother Maria, and her son Yuri, and the associate Elia von Daminsky were all glorified and proclaimed saints in the Orthodox Church by the Ecumenical Patriarchate in Constantinople. So my brethren, to sum it up, according to the Gospel, every man is a neighbor, irrespective of his race, tribe, or convictions. Not only like-minded people, not only a colleague, not only a fellow countryman, a neighbor for us may prove to be also our public political enemy, our ideological opponent, a man who does not agree with us on religious or other questions, a man who is psychologically and physically alien to us and even offensive. Now more than ever is this truth relevant for us in this divided nation that we live in, where one political faction shows nothing but hatred to the other side, broadening the division that has come upon us. Guess what? 
They are also our neighbors, even if we do not agree. Every man is a neighbor, whether he is one of our own or a stranger. This is because beyond the barriers of race, creed, or lifestyle, we are all children of God. Every single one of us is created in his, in, in his own image and likeness. And like the Lord taught us through this beautiful parable of the Good Samaritan, like St. Dimitri taught us through his example, we are called to love our neighbor and to help treat each other's wounds like the Good Samaritan did to whom was considered his enemy. Love for one's own must not fill up our whole heart to such an extent that no place remains in it for showing consideration and compassion to strangers. May this be our lot in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.